includes visitor badges. We'll be getting started shortly. Good afternoon and welcome to the today's retirement <coughs> ceremony in honor of Mr. Thomas C. Steffens, former Deputy Chief Financial Officer in the Office of the Undersecretary of Defense Comptroller or OUSDC. Your host and the presiding official for today's ceremony is former Acting Secretary of the Army, the Honorable Robert Speer. I am Calandra Lane the Director of Financial Improvement and Audit Remediation in OUSDC, and it's my great pleasure to emcee today's ceremony. Thanks to all of you, Mr. Steffen's friends, colleagues, mentors, and family members for joining us today on this special occasion. Please stand for the arrival of the official party, presentation of the colors, singing of the national anthem, and the invocation. Present the colors. Color. Ten. Hunt. Hunt. So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallant streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er oh, the land of the free and the home of the Thank you to the Joint Base Andrews Honor Guard for its presentation of the colors and to the Colonel Claudelia Pritchard Allen, Director, J1G1, Military District of Washington for her wonderful singing of the national anthem. And now, please remain standing through the invocation by Mr. Michael Bupre, Director of Human Capital and Resource Management in the Office of the Secretary, Under Secretary of Defense Comptroller. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we gather here today to honor and celebrate the life and work of Tom Steffens. We thank you for the many years of service, dedication, and commitment that have been given by Tom and his family. As Tom enters his new chapter of life, 
we ask your blessings. May Tom find joy, peace, and fulfillment in the days ahead. We ask that you guide Tom's steps, that they may continue to find purpose and meaning in the new opportunities that retirement will bring. We ask that you grant Tom, conti Tom continued health, strength, and the love of family and friends to surround and support him during this transition. May Tom's years ahead be filled with happiness, adventure, and a deep sense of contentment. We are grateful for the legacy Tom leaves behind, the wisdom shared, and the lives touched through his work, mentorship, and friendship. May he carry forward the lessons learned and continue to be blessings to others. Thank you, Lord, for your guidance and protection throughout his career. We trust that you will continue to watch over Tom and his family in his new journey. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Bupre. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. <coughs> to all of you in this remarkable Hall of Heroes, and to those of you watching online, we are extremely honored to have you join us today to celebrate Mr. Stephan's career, his achievements, his service to our nation, and to help him launch into retirement. The best is yet to come, sir. And Fran, I know you can't wait to have him home every night before 8 p.m. <laughs> In all seriousness, Mr. Steffens, before we call on you to tell us what your plans are for the future, you have asked three amazing speakers, all influential to your success, to share recollections about you. Each was your boss upon a time, but they come here today as your friends to pay you tribute. Our first speaker is former Acting Secretary of the Army, the Honorable Robert Speer. Honorable Speer. So thank you very much. You get the amazing speakers after me. Um, this is a celebration. You know, we're all here to purpose. I, I stopped by the Second Army's office, Tom, and Alex goes, you can't do this, sir. He's got to stay. Anybody who knows Alex up front, he goes, what an amazing person. And that's part of what I think you're going to hear throughout everybody's discussion today. And so you're going to hear from three speakers covering different parts of his career. And so Todd, General Todd Seminite and Honorable Mike McCord, thank you for me participating in this. Because I've just been lucky to be along for the ride and why you know why guys like Tom is why you do so well. And what you're going to hear a common theme throughout this is service, just an individual that cares. I think we're, Pam, I, I saw Pam Franceschi out in the hallway and we started talking about, boy, what an even kill individual. <coughs> he never talks down to people, he's just part of the team. And that's part of what I want to give that whole team work. But before I do, a lot of VIPs. But I'm going to start, there's three sets of VIPs I like that I'm going to talk about. That's the family, the, C, the SESs, the honorables, and the GOs in here. And then I'm going to hit the people online too because they'll be part of Tom's journey to got him where he is today and who are also successful that. First of all, the family. Uh, you know, I've, I've actually known Tom for a long time. Uh, I, I, I thought I remembered him roaming around as a captain. He told me, no, it was a major. He just looked like a captain. He was lost <laughs> in the Pentagon. It was a captain. Yeah, I thought so. I thought it was a captain. But he met Fran. Matter of fact, Fran, I just saw it. I think I told you this. Go online to Facebook. They were just in Portugal. And what you got to see was Fran and Tom 31 years ago, because tomorrow is their 31st anniversary. And you got to see them sitting on the same beach 31 years ago that they sat on in their last trip to Portugal. I didn't see any difference. <laughs> no difference whatsoever. They look exactly the same. You know, so for, he met Fran along the way. They've been married, like I said, for 31 years. She's been a teacher, currently a librarian remarkable family and somebody that Maggie and I have joined with some other folks in the room just on a regular basis, social basis, because Tom is that individual who is your partner at work and became great friends through life. And I know it will remain that way. But what, what an amazing family. I met, and I'm gonna maybe wrap, I'm gonna get this right maybe, this is my third time hosting a ceremony or co-hosting a ceremony for Tom. He <laughs> said, so I'm going to do it until I get it right. <laughs> but the first time I did it was his retirement from 06. 
And David was like this. Stand up, David. Stand up. <laughs> Real taller now. And Sarah was a young lady. I think you were you was in grade school, junior high. And, and Sarah, I'm going to go for you first. Sarah's lieutenant in the National Guard, quartermaster. Amazing. Congratulations. Commission from Fordham and ROTC and graduated uh, from NYU in the Tisch School of Arts. Remarkable young lady. I got, I got a rat on her. I got to stand up please also. Okay? <laughs> Look at this young lady. She was on today and I want to call shenanigans on today. No. They took her and said, we're going to make this person look nice. I mean, that was like taking Miss America and just putting a comb in her hair and saying, look what we did. <laughs> Beautiful young lady, but what a future leader and somebody who's going to take the place of Tom along the way. And so thank you, Sarah, for your service, and thanks for being here today. Thank you. you. I mentioned David. So one of the things that David's already, David is a little bit better, a lot, <laughs> in golf than his dad. <laughs> he just graduated from uh, James Madison University, got a degree in sports and recreation management. He's been interning around, and so I'm going to get you out there and we'll play a little bit of golf with him. So a remarkable young man also. He's got, his, got his, some also family. The same family, which the one that's missing is the leaders of the family, but Tom, I know they're here in spirit. I got to meet his mom, Leonie, and dad, Charles, during his retirement ceremony. And again, David was driving around a cart for, with, with them because for, for his dad was in a cart time. He, a, a World War II vet who had been in the Pacific during World War II. Remarkable gentleman, re remarkable mother, which instilled the, the service attitude and just the, the individual that we see in Tom today. You saw that in his mom and dad. But we also got to meet along the way brother Jack, Brother Jack's an accountant, and Jack, welcome back here to the Pentagon. Welcome to George Tor. His sister Diane, and Sister Diane was a, a nutritionist, and uh, I think a dietitian. I think you're still doing nutritional stuff right now. Just retired too. You just retired too. <laughs> so you need a you need a leader to show you the way. Huh? Okay. What, what she's here with her husband uh, Bob. Great name, Bob. <laughs> there you go. Uh, and then son, their, uh, their son, Robbie. So thank you for being here today and all the remarkable friends that are here. I know this room is jam-packed, but I do, I'm going to miss, like look at this right now, it's got SES or, or GO all the way back for four, five, six rows. <laughs> and so I know I'm going to miss somebody, but I do want to highlight some. Again, thank you, Honorable Mike McCord, for letting me do this. We, we, I mentioned uh, Todd Senemite. We, we have uh, General Spielman right now, who is the current commander of the Corps of, uh, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. And we have folks from throughout the financial management community, my family, my continued family, Tom's continued family, everybody from Alale, from, uh, great to see you here from the Navy. We've got folks from the Ar Army, and Audrey, thanks so much. Audrey and I go back to the time we were, you were 11, and I was a major back in information systems. Ken. Sean Lennon, Pam Franceschi, I think it was Sean Lennon, uh, Brad Dwyer over the now Corps of Engineers. And, and he says you're messing it up already, so you better <laughs> step up. Don't let that audit go. Don't let that audit go. But there, there's several of those folks all along. I see, t I see other friends and family in here from the financial management community we kind of grew up with. And so I feel back at home. I see Sue Goodyear, DLA, so great to see you there also, Sue. Um, but I want to also really, because we got, thank you for all the general officers that are here, um, who I've got to serve a day to. I see uh, folks back a lot across the room. But I also want to go online because we got a tremendous opportunity nowadays to share from social media if you do it right and let people know what this young man has done throughout his career still a young man <laughs> um, and maybe highlight some of that but let them participate so I'm going to cover parts of the career broadly as, ta as uh, Honorable Mike McCord comes up here and does what he did here and culminating in as a deputy chief financial officer I think Ge this general seminar will talk about his time of uh, almost six years where Tom Steffens grew up as an army officer kind of break his, his time as four times as a junior officer it was at that time as a junior officer where he ran in, and I know Mike Regan is on the line. Mike Regan was in, in Italy, and Mike Regan, for people who don't know, was another financial management guy, great guy, accountant. He ran with a CPA. He retired recently, too, was living down in Georgia. But he's the one who convinced Tom not to get up. 
Tom was having a, I'll call it a minor crisis in terms of, hey, not the greatest leadership where I'm at. And Mike, McCor Mike, Mike uh, Regan instilled in him, I need you to stay. This is what leadership, <coughs> I'm gonna take care of you. And it's part of the reason I think you'll hear from Tom why he stayed. Other guys along the way, I know Jimmy Stevens told me he stayed here. Jimmy Stevens was the 106 commander that ultimately over at the, um, in the uh, community behind the fence and stuff at uh, Fort Bragg, got him on over there uh, behind the fence at Fort Bragg. You ended up with leaders like that, Jim Watkins. Jim Watkins told me he's gonna be on the line. Jim Watkins was a Deputy Assistant Secretary of Financial Operations well before uh, Wes Robinson. And he's one of the ones that along that way, he came to me one day and he goes, you know, you're beating me up on the audit. Sound familiar, you beat him up on the audit. <laughs> and we need to get him there. We need to get there, and I, but I don't have the talent to do it. And Jim and I had the discussion, I know some talent. We just need to go get it, you need to go talk to him. And Tom Steffens is the name that came up. He goes, well, you know, he's not a CPA. I said, it doesn't matter. What he is is a leader, he's an individual, who works with others, and he's gonna make this happen. Mike, I mean, Jim called him, and we worked out a game plan to get Tom Steffens in here. Behind the scenes, I don't think we told you that, but we kind of conspired against him. <laughs> and that kind of started a 12-year career of an Army officer who had built through battalion command, who had been in almost every type of financial management job, whether it was budget or a financial officer, military pay. He had learned to bring together a team and be successful to include battalion command in Iraq where he was where awarded the Bronze Star. That laid the groundwork for that, and we saw the capability he had. It took him only one year as a GS-15 to move up to an SES, and we ended up uh, moving him on out. And after a while, I said, I need Wes, Wes Miller, who's online also. Wes told me he'd be online. Another DASA FO work trying to audit. In fact, I originally told Tom that he couldn't leave and he couldn't retire until he got a successful clean audit opinion. But I, I know he's journey. I see other folks like Lauren Venable, and I see uh, Asif Khan here. People who always will be here as we're talking on it, but also recognize talent in, in people who are trying to do the right job. So thank you also for being here. I overlooked you a little bit, but I know you were, you were always sneaking over my shoulder when I was here. <laughs> so folks along the way that are online today got to participate in Tom, but they all benefited from Tom. Again, what I want to consider, what Tom was always, he was one of those guys that when you went and gave him a task, he was down in the G4, he was down in the G9, he was down around the way working with peers, and he understood that he couldn't get there on his own. But that's the way he did business on a regular basis. He worked and cooperated. Meanwhile, what I told Tom, your job was to help build the, your future type of replacements. And that's the other thing Tom did. Tom mentored and grew other folks to do such. I mean, I, you, get, you escape, Will. Hank, Hank Wayne is back there. Hank Wayne to get you back. But you see folks along the way that he also brought uh, into the team. And I think the biggest thing I think you'll hear again from other folks, he, he's a team partner for folks. He's somebody that learned his trade technically, but he was also somebody who also conveyed it and grew the teamwork on those things. And Tom, that's, what I've, that's one of the things that I've been most proud of being a work with you as a, as a teammate in things, is how well you bring those together. The other aspect of Tom that uh, still needs work, I mentioned it already, <laughs> is that not only does his son, his son beat him, I know his brother-in-law beats him at golf, <laughs> I beat him at golf, <laughs> and part of what I was told as he goes along is he's gonna want to try to improve his golf game. In addition to that, he's been challenged by David to, to break a sub six minute mile again. And he's tried, I, I, know, I know Paula Rebar, where are you at out there? Raise your hand. He's convinced her to go, her to go run the Army 10 mile because Tom's gonna run his 19th Army 10 mile, all right? 19. So uh, I know he's in his running shape, so he, maybe he won't be home all the time. And we're gonna still try to grab him to do some other things. But Tom, what I wanna make sure is I grab this. I got, I got a little kit that I carried into lunch today. <laughs> And I want to make sure that you have, what, what David told me is you lose a lot of golf balls. <laughs> so, I, so I'll just stick this right here for golf balls, a glove, some tees, and everything else for you, okay? So there's no excuse that you don't have any golf balls at least to start off with, all right? So we're going to make sure we get them out there. But the other thing I, I know, 
Tom's not going to disappear. Tom, 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 as I said, jokingly, he's, just, he's still a young guy, but he's got a lot still to give, and I know he'll continue to give to our community. He'll be a staunch supporter throughout the financial management, but also defense community. And I, I think that uh, not to be forgotten is that he is an individual who community service-wise, I've already seen him out and about in the community. So Tom, thank you so much for what you've done. Thank you so much for what you've left behind. <coughs> Because no, we didn't achieve audit. I, I know the Honorable Miller out there, and I see him and McAndrews. They're still staying here, but I know that they know you've left a legacy and you've left some other things within the Department of Defense that will help us get to where we need to be. And you'll still be somebody they can call upon when you're out there, like you do Mark Easton and crew uh, throughout the room. So thank you so much for you. I will cheer you on, and I thank you so much for being your friend, being my friend and letting me participate in the ceremony today. Our best wishes to you, and we, we, we know you're not lost, but congratulations on your retirement. I'll tell Alex I failed that you still left. <laughs> right, so thank you so much. Thank you, Honorable Spear, and thank you so much for hosting today's event. Ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker is the Under Secretary of Defense Comptroller and Chief Financial Officer, the Honorable Mike McCord. Thanks, Calandra. I'm going to maybe join Bob in saying I question your count of three amazing speakers um, <laughs> as well. Uh, but great to be up here with, with Tom and, and with Bob. Uh, and I appreciate this opportunity to, to, to wish Tom farewell. And I just I was saying as I walked in, I saw the list yesterday of who's in the room and so many familiar names, so many familiar faces. I want to recognize, uh, as Bob did, uh, Tom's family, who, who I have not met before, his work family here, uh, and Comptroller, his work family from the Army, Army Corps, General Seminite, General Spellman. Uh, Wes, if you're out there on streaming, as I just heard that you are, uh, great to have all of you here. Uh, and I appreciate this opportunity. Um, when Kathy Miller and I started thinking about who, who we were going to get uh, to be the DCFO, uh, Kathy will know that I was, I was worried about having to choose between, well, I'm either going to get someone who knows the Defense Department, knows our culture and our systems and our, the way we think and act and talk, or I can get someone who has experience with a clean audit opinion, but I can't get both in one package, right? I mean, it's just... I'm going to, I don't know, which way am I going to end up choosing? Uh, so then Tom comes to the rescue uh, <laughs> by applying, and we have someone who had both. Both uh, knows the department backward and forward and who knows clean opinions backward and forward. So that was, that was uh, just a real gift to us. At the time, I did not know that Tom referred to himself as Tom from accounting. I only heard that later. <laughs> I probably would have picked him even sooner had, had I known that. My dad, Tom, was an accountant. Um, uh, my late father uh, shared, shared that. Uh, I also didn't know at the time that, that, that uh, Tom is also a runner, which Bob referred to. I believe Tom's faster than I am, but he's been polite enough never to say that, so I appreciate, <laughs> appreciate that as well. I also didn't know until more recently that Tom's career is almost exactly as long as mine is, although Tom's career is more distinguished because he served his country in uniform, which I have not. Uh, so I want to commend you uh, for your service both before you got here and while you're with us. So Tom was clearly the best choice we could have made to be the DCFO. He led progress on the audit for us, but even more important to me than the results, I would say, even in a bottom line organization such as we have in, in Comptroller is how he led his team. And I'll just give a couple uh, adjectives or, or that come to mind for me. F uh, first and foremost, as I would say, uh, with compassion. Uh, that's probably the thing that comes to mind most about the way Tom leads is with compassion. Also with vision, as exemplified in his leadership in crafting these priority memos that we got the secretary to sign up to, to have all of us from all the thousand things in front of us that need to be done to, to pick the three or four most important foundational things and align on them. So helping us prioritize. So Tom had that vision uh, and he, he really embraced and looked forward to not just that part of the job, but also to the semi-annual sessions with the deputy secretary. He was looked forward for weeks ahead of time to when we're gonna get on, on sort of to the big time and, and have all those senior leaders there and the deputy there to talk about how we can move forward. So 
compassion, vision. Next, I would say partnership. Tom, Tom, uh, just exemplary partnership with the services, uh, with, with with Steve from ANS here. Uh, every, anyone, DLA, anyone, everyone who could help or should be heard. Tom <coughs> was always out there working with other people. Um, maybe most important, I don't know, with respect. Uh, Tom respects those he works with. And as you look around this room, I think you see how that comes back to you. Um, so Tom is rightly proud of the diverse team that he led. He talked about that all the time. And uh, again, I think that would not have been that way without the respect that Tom shows to everyone that he works with. And uh, last, I'd say with humility. Tom put his team first, was always talking about his team, calling attention to their work, their accomplishments, never his own. Never heard him once talk about his own accomplishments. You would, you would maybe be around Tom a long time, not know he's a Presidential Rank Award winner, even though if you told, I told you that, you wouldn't be surprised either, right? Um, so uh, as I said, Tom's family I've not met before. Uh, Fran, I want to join Bob in wishing you a happy anniversary tomorrow. You and Tom, your first ever without him being uh, late from work, so you can make that reservation <laughs> for any time that you want, I guess. Um, honestly, I have, I have some mixed feelings about you because uh, Tom came back from your trip to Portugal last year and it was clear his days were numbered with us. He was, <laughs> he was pretty, pretty upfront about that. Um, the <laughs> but it's only fair that you get a vote and you won fair and square, so no, no hard feelings uh, fr from this side. Um, so I do say one, say one thing about one other person on Tom's team besides Tom. Uh, and uh, I think back to uh, the old Snow White movie version, at least, where uh, you know, the, the Wicked Queen says, mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest on the, of them all? That's one of those questions you don't want to ask if you can't stand the answer, <laughs> right? Um, so similarly, it's tough to see who has the best deputy of all, uh, especially we work, I work for Deputy Secretary Kath Hicks. Pretty amazing public servant. Our deputy here, Kathy Miller, also an amazing public servant. But as we say in sports, Kim Lawrence is in the conversation. Uh, Kim was the glue holding DCFO together before I got there three and a half years ago, when I got <coughs> there, after I got there, waiting for, for, for when we could go through the process and bring Tom on board, and since then as well. So Kim, I want to thank you for your partnership with Tom, your partnership continuing uh, forward with Tina also. Just uh, really appreciate what you have done in partnership uh, with Tom to lead that team. <laughs> so um, in closing, I just want to, I want to join Bob, all, all your colleagues past and present from the, from the Army family, from our family, uh, in congratulating you, on not just on a job well done, but, but a career well spent. And I want to wish you and Fran all the best in your next chapter. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> Thank you, Honorable McCord. Ladies and gentlemen, former Chief of Engineers of the United States Army and Commanding General of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, Lieutenant General Retired Todd Semonite. Well, Honorable Speer, Honorable McCord, to all the general officers, the SESs, distinguished guests, and the friends of the Steffens families, uh, very, very excited to be here today. Um, I want to thank everybody for coming. There's an old adage that I always said that priorities are those things that get resourced. Now, almost all financial crowd in the room, so you're going to tell me that the most important priority is probably money, okay? I'm telling you, a lot of times it's time. Senior people and everybody has a hard time finding time to go to events. The fact that you're here today to honor this family and honor that man is a big deal, so I really, really appreciate it. So. <clears throat> I'm very, very honored to be able to participate in the retirement of this uh, of, uh, Tom. And before I talk about him, I want to take a little bit of time to continue to talk more about Tom's family. Mr. Spear introduced the family, a lot of great uh, accolades out there. One of the things in my 41 years, 41 and a half years, is that I have always a great soft spot for soldiers, but I always had a real warmth in my heart for spouses, 
and for military kids. And there's many, many times when this guy will tell you that the family's number one, but when you look at how many hours he spends with you a day versus how many hours did he spend somewhere else, it might be hard to see that. But Fran, the bottom line is there's times that he wasn't there for the kids, he wasn't there for you, you're throwing those kids in the back of a station wagon, you're going somewhere, you're trying to be the dad, you're trying to do all the things, and do you two, um, uh, both Sarah and Dave, there's times where dad wasn't at the Christmas play, he wasn't at scouts, he wasn't at the soccer practice, and you guys never signed up to join the Army. He did, okay? And the fact that you have stood by his sign, if there was ever a time where you said, Dad, I'm, we're tired of it, we want you around a little bit more, he would have walked out the next day. But the fact that you stood by him, that's why he's sitting here 39 years later. So, Fran, stand up. Sarah, Dave, stand up and turn around real quick, okay? I want everybody to give a big round of applause to Tom's family. So the first time that I met Tom was back in 2000 when I was a brigade commander in Germany. I was walking around. I didn't really have time to get, make appointments to go see everybody in the, in the community. So I just started walking into b battalions and uh, brigades and seeing people. I went into a finance battalion. Almost the entire battalion was gone to Kosovo. And I see a major over there uh, huddled over a, a desk. And I said, who are you? He goes, I'm the XO. And so I got to know him, Tom, phenomenal guy. And then uh, my wife, Connie, uh, she worked with Fran in what was called Army Family Team Building back then always dedicated back to be able to make our families more resilient, be able to make them with all the deployments that came a couple years later. The bottom line is, is that we got to know both Tom and Fran very, very well. 2016, I was very honored to take over the Corps of Engineers. I took command and Tom came up to me. He goes, hey, sir, I'm gonna be your CFO. He stood side by side with me for four and a half years and then was with the Corps, with General Spellman for the rest, six years in the Corps of Engineers. And I'm very, very honored to talk a little bit about his time taken care of at the time was 38,000 and about a $68 billion portfolio. General Spellman's got more on his plate now, but Tom did a phenomenal job of taking care of the Corps. I'm initially gonna talk a little bit about what we did in the Corps at the time, just to give you an intensity of some of the missions that are out there. But like anybody, I always tell engineers, you guys are great, I love you, but the thing that makes engineers successful are all the other specialties that are in the room. The f we can do anything without an unbelievable finance community. So I'm gonna talk about the core first and then a little bit more about Tom's work from the finance side. During my time in the core, we had a massive mission. We had uh, faced with some of the nation's most impressing requirements to fulfill the core of engineers mission of engineering solutions for the nation's toughest challenges. Tom supported a complex array of missions, including a massive civil works program, worldwide support for our military and warfighting programs, disaster response, and support to fe the federal agencies. Tom helped to vastly improve our partnership with FEMA, particularly during 2017. We had Harvey, Irma, and Maria, 2018, Florence and Michael, and he did it in stride. When the pandemic hit in America in 2020, the Corps' ability to rapidly design and construct Alternative care facilities, kind of like a mini ICU and massive big convention centers, was amazing. And Tom stepped up to be able to do that, to be able to take care of the COVID threat. <coughs> Tom was instrumental in supporting this major undertaking during the height of the pandemic, while his entire workforce was getting accustomed to remote work. This was precedent setting and was noteworthy across the federal government. Finally, the financial operations to support both the acceleration and the subsequent stand down of construction of the Southwest border wall, the wall, was politically a, a politically controversial issue, still needed the utmost integrity in financial, man, financial management and reporting that Tom and his team expertly provided. This so accurately demonstrated the apolitical posture of the United States Army Corps of Engineers. After my departure, Tom helped Scott and was instrumental in supporting the short notice Afghanistan refugee reception operations at multiple locations throughout the country. Tom was always grateful to the cooperation support from OSD Comptroller Ann McAndrew and her team during the entire challenging period. So that's kind of the mission, and that's what we really get paid to do is accomplish the mission, but there's so many things in the back rooms, and you know it very well here in the building, to be able to accomplish and make all those things come together. Tom was a mastery in the world of financial operations. He was epic and he was world class. He modernized our enduring ERP, it's called Enterprise uh, Resource Planning System, 
and we call it CFMS. It was an acronym. It stood for the Corps of Engineers Financial Management System, and it worked closely with OMB to improve their confidence in our financial controls and reporting of the growing Civil Works program. Tom led the efforts of a financial management workforce of over 1,600 personnel across nine divisions and 44 districts at a time with governing policy, doctrine, controls, and oversight. What's impressive is that most of these personnel did not report to him direct, rather that he leveraged the concept of community of practice with a governing body of division reps and service FM staffs serving as a type of board of directors that was still used to this day to promote effectiveness and consistency. Tom was responsible for the operations of the Corps' finance, finance center under the direct leadership of Ms. Sidney Blevins. Due to the Corps' unique mission, their use of DFAS is more limited than most DOD entities. This coupled with USA's CFO and Director of Finance Center with full operational control over CFMS created unity of effort and was unprecedented in DOD and essential to audit success. USA prides itself in our relationship with DFAS particularly with respect to synchronization of financial reporting for the department. Finally, never a doubt, the processes, controls, and integrity of, the, of USACE's finance center and CFUMS II resulted in six consecutive unmodified audit opinions under his watch. As previously mentioned, Tom received the Presidential Rank Award in 22 with his impactful leadership of some of the most complex but effective business operations in the federal government and was awarded the prestigious De Fleury Medal upon his departure. In closing, I want to tell a short story and I'm going to talk about a reflection on Tom. So I talk about CFUMS and CFUMS II. CFUMS was a very, very old system, about 20 years old, a lot of frustration, no one really knew how it worked, and it's the way that the core kind of pulled everything together. When I came into the core, we had talked about reform back in 16 in DOD. I didn't really like the word reform. I wanted to revolutionize the core. I wanted to do things better, faster processes, world class. So I went out several trips and I traveled basically um, about 200 weeks in my four years and I spent three days a week out talking to people. And I'd come, I remember one time the first several months I came back and uh, I was really totally frustrated because everybody was very frustrated about this old system called CFMS. So I, I said, Tom, I said, go get all your smart people, bring them in a room, and I want to have a discussion with you. So I go walking in, he goes, we, I said, we need to do a better job of fixing CFMS. Tom, I want CFMS too. Tom looked dazzled. He looked at me and he goes, sir, we don't have CFMS too. What is it? How does it work? And I said, hey, I'm a general. I don't do specific things. I kind of do general things, okay? <laughs> I don't really know, all right? But go in a room, figure it out, Come back in a year from now with CFMS 2, and I want it to be worldwide. I want it to be, you're a wizard, a wizard of finance. There's a lot of smart people, there's a lot of SMEs. Wizards are people that really, really are good at doing things. Figure this out. So, about a year later, we're up on the seventh floor of the core, we're having a town hall. And everybody knew CFMS, was about, CFMS 2 was about ready to come out. And so, somebody asked a question, and I, uh, I said, Tom, come on up and talk about CFMS 2. So, Tom comes up. And he did an amazing job, about five minutes, talking about how fast it was going to be, easy to work, amazing system, all interwined, a great system. And he sat back down. And somebody way in the back of the room, who I don't think had been with us a long time, kind of said, hey, who is that guy talking about CFMS? Tom proudly stands up and he goes, I'm Tom, Tom from accounting. <laughs> That's where the story comes from, OK? <clears throat> The last reflection, when you do a retirement ceremony, if there's a bunch of people here that still have 10 or 15 years and you're ever honored to do a retirement ceremony, you always got a word to use the word legacy. So think about what is Tom Steffen's legacy? Two years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now. Some of you are probably gonna tell me it's programs, it's projects, maybe it's budgets, it's maybe promises. I don't think that's what his legacy is all. I would propose that Tom Steffen's legacy is the spark that he lit in thousands of people to be able to figure out how to do world-class performance, unbelievable leadership, and a passion to be able to succeed. And the biggest compliment anybody could ever get is somewhere in, in the world out there where somebody's in a dark place and they're short on time and they're trying to figure out how to get a really, really hard thing done, somebody would probably say, what would Tom Steffen's do? That's an unbelievable legacy. 
So, ladies and gentlemen, one of DOD's very best, Mr. Tom Steffens. Lieutenant General Seminite, thank you, sir. At this time, Secretary McCord will present Mr. Steffens with the Department of Defense Medal for Distinguished Career Civilian Service. Would you both please come to the center of the stage? Audience, please rise. Attention to orders. Department of Defense Distinguished Civilian Service Award for Mr. Thomas C. Steffens. Mr. Thomas C. Steffens is recognized for distinguished civilian service as Deputy Chief Financial Officer, Office of the Undersecretary of Defense Comptroller from May 2022 to July 2024. He demonstrated exceptional skill, knowledge, and dedication in advancing the Department of Defense financial statement auditability, though challenged with arguably the largest and most complex audit in the world. His mastery of accounting and audit standards and procedures repeatedly provided senior department leaders with innovative advice and solutions to navigate through a period of extraordinary audit scrutiny by auditors and stakeholders. His strategic vision and business acumen were pivotal in articulating Secretary of Defense annual audit priorities, specifying expectations of the principal staff assistants, and leveraging the deputy's management action group for concerning Department of Defense enterprise strategy and efforts to accelerate progress towards its 2028 legal mandate to achieve an unmodified audit opinion. Despite no established playbook to remediate expansive auditor findings, Mr. Steffens galvanized financial and functional communities to improve funds balance with the Department of the Treasury, strengthen internal controls, create comprehensive population of transactions, and optimize asset valuation. Mr. Steffens also guided the reevaluation of defense articles given to Ukraine under presidential drawdown authority. The distinctive accomplishments of Mr. Steffens reflects great credit upon himself and the Department of Defense. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Please be seated. <coughs> Mr. Steffens has received a letter of appreciation sir, yep. from the Secretary of Defense, the Honorable Lloyd J. Austin, which reads in part, you have bettered our country, personifying the values that guide our democracy while defending our homeland, protecting our people, and preserving our way of life. You made an enormous difference in the lives of countless others, and our shared prosperity is a direct result of your unwavering commitment. On behalf of the entire Department of Defense, I extend my sincere appreciation to you and your family for all of your sacrifices over the years. Mr. Steffens also received a letter of congratulations from Senator Mark R. Warner of the Commonwealth of Virginia. In part, the Senator's letter reads, throughout your time in the Army, you helped ensure the security and freedom of your fellow Americans. We are forever indebted to you for your courage and the sacrifices you have made for our country, particularly during Operation Desert Storm. Having then entered a career of civil service in the federal government is an honorable choice. Friends and colleagues attest to your high standards and the important contributions you have made to the United States Department of Defense as a member of the Senior Executive Service. I congratulate you on your many accomplishments. 
you have had the most honorable career one can have. <laughs> Last but not least, Honorable McCord is today presenting his letter of congratulations to Mr. Steffens. Paraphrased, it reads, as Deputy Chief Financial Officer, you took on a job that almost no one wants. <laughs> that of leading the Department of Defense through unchartered challenges of financial statement audit remediation. I suspect your years of Army leadership made you easily apply the principles of war to meet these challenges. You helped articulate clear strategic objectives and direction for audit. You used your audit roadmaps to identify interdependencies and put components on a synchronized offensive. You used mass and collaboration to assemble a concentration of experts to begin chopping down huge issues. You invoked simplicity and surprise by successfully helping to advocate a legislative approach to change dynamics. Above all, your unity of command has given us strength through leadership. Ladies and gentlemen, the Joint Base Andrews Honor Guard will now conduct a flag folding ceremony to honor Mr. Steffens and his service to our nation. The U.S. flag being folded and presented has been flown over the Pentagon on several occasions during Mr. Steffens' tenure as our DCFO. Will the Honor Guard please come forward? For more than 200 years, the American flag has been the symbol of our nation's unity, as well as a source of pride and inspiration for millions of citizens. Born on June 14, 1777, the Second Continental Congress determined that the flag of the United States be 13 stripes, alternating between seven red and six white, and that the Union be 13 stars, white in a blue field representing a new constellation. Between 1777 in 1960, the shape and design of the flag evolved into the flag presented before you today. The colors of the flag are symbolic. Red symbolizes hardiness and valor. White signifies purity and innocence. And blue represents vigilance, perseverance, and justice. Traditionally, a symbol of liberty the American flag has carried the message of freedom and inspired Americans both at home and abroad. The 13 stripes represent the original 13 states, Delaware, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Georgia, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Maryland, South Carolina, New Hampshire, Virginia, New York, North Carolina, and Rhode Island. Today, the 50 stars represent our 50 United States of America. I, not, I know not what course others may take, but as for me, 
Give me liberty or give me death. Patrick Henry. These are the times that try men's souls. The summer soldier and the sunshine patriot will, in this crisis, shrink from the service of their country, but he that stands it now deserves the love and thanks of man and woman. Thomas Paine. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. They are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, Declaration of Independence. We the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution of the United States of America, United States Constitution. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech or the press or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances, First Amendment. The basis of our political system is the right of the people to make and to alter their constitutions of government. George Washington. My God, how little do my countrymen know what precious blessings they are in possession of and which no other people on earth enjoy. Thomas Jefferson. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Abraham Lincoln. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Emma Lazarus, inscription on the Statue of Liberty. Ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. John F. Kennedy. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Martin Luther King Jr. Since 1776, no generation of Americans have been spared the responsibility of defending freedom. Today's servicemen and women remain committed to preserving the freedom that others have won for us for generations to come. By displaying the flag, and giving it a distinctive fold, we show respect to the flag and express our gratitude to those individuals who fought and continue to fight for freedom at home and abroad. Since the dawn of the 20th century, our service men and women have proudly flown the flag in every major conflict on lands and skies around the world. It is their responsibility, our responsibility, to continue to protect and preserve the rights, privileges, and freedoms that we, as Americans, enjoy today. The United States flag represents who we are. It stands for the freedom that we all share and the pride and patriotism we feel for our country. We cherish its legacy, and as a beacon of hope to one and all, long may it wave. On behalf of the President of the United States, the United States Air Force, and a grateful nation, please accept this flag as a symbol of our appreciation, our appreciation for 39 years of honorable and faithful service. Ladies and gentlemen, our honoree, Mr. Tom Steffens. Wow. Um, 
I don't know where to start. All right. Uh, uh, those of you working with me know I'm not big on reading off scripts, uh, reading off notes. Maybe this was a time I should have. Uh, <laughs> um, so um, not to uh, make any disrespect of the quotes that you just heard. If you listen to that, that's, you got basically you got the United States history here in about five, ten minutes of not only uh, what was important to us, but some of those great individuals who you heard from. Um, so, but, but let me start off with one thing and uh, to break the ice a little bit because it'll make it a little bit easier for me. So uh, I'll, I'll quote uh, one of my favorite philosophers, uh, and you have to bear with me because if you're at my retirement zone here 12 years ago in this very same room, you may have heard this because a lot of you out there were here. I know you were. I know, Kathy, you were here. But I'll quote Yogi Berra, okay? And Yogi, um, you know, Yogi never, oh, got it quite right, but you understood what he meant, and actually his, his quotes had a lot of deep meaning, all right? So Yogi said one time, um, you know, I always go to other people's funerals. Otherwise, how can you expect them to go to yours? <laughs> <laughs> and so what Yogi really meant, though, and I told that's in this the other day, right? So Yogi really meant was retirement ceremonies, right? And I got to tell you, team, uh, <laughs> just in this room alone, uh, I've got a few, we've got a few coming up. I know, I know Scott, you're, you're right around the corner. We just, uh, Christine, yours was last week. Uh, we've got, I know we've got a good friend of mine, uh, Rear Admiral Del Crandall. For those who know Del, he's the JAG of the Navy. He's coming up. Uh, I know um, right around the corner, too, I know we got Terry Dilley from, uh, uh, coming up here in October. And, and my very good friend, and I, let me mention now in case that slips me later, who is online, uh, who I've known probably more than just about anybody here in this room for 40 years is Mr. Aaron Gillison uh, from DFAS, Audrey, and uh, you know, I, I, my heart goes out to him, and I, I will be out there in the end, November 18th, uh, 19th. But uh, so, you know, from uh, a more serious note, probably more than, uh, you know, in Yogi, though, uh, and this is a little bit diverse, and I'm, I'm going to steal a quote that uh, Christine used last week, and uh, it was from uh, Mother Teresa, or St. Mother Teresa, actually, right, who said, um, Fill your life with adventures and not things, all right? And she said, have stories to tell and not things to show. And boy, I, I, if, I, it's one thing I tried to, to live by is I, I don't, you know, I really appreciate the presentations. And, and by the way, team, uh, you know, uh, what everybody's done for me today and last week. So, so Pat Dees directed this entire thing. This is not an easy thing to do. <laughs> Uh, and, in and then last week, uh, uh, Kim Lawrence kind of ran the show for my luncheon, which, w which is fantastic. Kim, you and the entire ODCFO team, so thank you, Kim. And thank you, the last two, for being a dynamite deputy. Um, also today, uh, you know, uh, uh, Claudelia, Delia, Delia, if you're still here, uh, uh, also I, I refer to as Colonel Pritchard Allen. So the story behind this is uh, Michael. Uh, her, her husband uh, and I would pass each other in the hallway at least twice a day and chat about small things. And then one time it came up that Mike revealed to me that uh, his wife is uh, getting promoted to colonel. This is probably about a year ago. I don't know if Michael's here, but, but, but Michael, uh, I think, uh, uh, Cladelia, thank you so much because uh, 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 the f phenomenal uh, rendition of the, of the National Anthem this morning. The, the color guard, the Air Force color guard, right, Jay? Right, Jay reminded me, uh, he, he reminded me of my good choice in using the Air Force today as color guard. They did a phenomenal job. Uh, Calandra Lane. C guys, I've been to probably at least, I don't know, 50, 60 ceremonies here in this room. I have not heard a better MC announcer than Ms. Calandra Lane. <laughs> uh, and, and all the team behind to help this, uh, you know, Jeremy Stone, all the escorts out here today, um, you know, folks to help setting up. We do have some goodies here. Uh, you're going to get a special treat at the very end. Uh, there's a rumor that I'm going to sing the entire Army song a cappella. Uh, <laughs> some of you from the Corps know, uh, uh, but I am going to ask for some help. But uh, so that's a little gift. But the bigger gift is there is some goodies back there. And if you like red velvet cake, I think that, I think we got red velvet cake. All right, so that's, that's good stuff, right? Um, uh, so, but uh, but no, I. The words of uh, St. Mother Teresa really ring true to me because I, what's all, what this is all about today, and I'm not going to be able to mention everybody's name because of the, all the folks that have touched me in 39 years. It's, it's amazing. Uh, and it's, it's why, you know, what was the most thing you derived out of, of my 30 years? It's the relationships. It's the relationships. It's the places that I've gone. Uh, I was kind of competing with Mr. Sp Honorable Spear here. He finally was very proud. He came, told me uh, early this week that he got back from his big trip out west, and he finally went to all 50 states. Uh, I had him beat by about 12 years. Um, 
But uh, one of the reasons for that is uh, it's the Army. I mean, it never would have been, you know, heck, I mean, I know I've, I've been out to, outside of New Jersey a few times before joining the Army, but but, uh, but the Army really uh, did so much for me, and 40 countries, you know. And, you know, going to the Bol- Bolshoi Ballet in, in Moscow, uh, going to, sw- oops, swimming. Oh, boy, this is really going to look good. <laughs> Yeah, the photo photographer's not going to have too many 2D shots later, so. Uh, uh, you know, climbing Mount Sinai, climbing Mount Rainier, do, you know, do just fantastic experiences I've had over the years. Uh, audiences with two popes, uh, shook hands with uh, two presidents in this very building, uh, you know, a long time ago. Uh, got to meet the New York Yankees right here uh, shortly after 9-11, Scott. When they, they all came in uh, at, the, at the request of the secretary and met with people. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't have done that doing anything else other than being a, you need both wearing a uniform and, and being in civil service. So. Uh, a couple things, uh, and I'll, I'll touch on a couple I call inflection points um, over my career. So you got to go back to 44 years ago. See if I talk long enough, my pants will dry. Um, so, um, so 44 years ago, uh, uh, I was a kid in high school, senior high school in uh, Jersey City, and uh, so those of you familiar, I got. Uh, Mr. Edwin Domingo, Colonel Retired Edwin Domingo, Lieutenant Colonel Retired Dom Degnan, and Mr. Mike Chappell, uh, all here from the, the uh, infamous, illustrious uh, St. Peter's University in Jersey City. So the story behind this is uh, I was in high school. I went to Hudson Catholic Regional High School, one city block, one city block from uh, St. Peter's. And Mike went to Hudson, too. Uh, and uh, I was got a letter. I applied for an ROTC scholarship. I figured, hey, what the heck, I'll try this, right? And so I... So right around 44 years ago this month, I, I got a letter, and it says you've been, you know, conditionally or you're in a, nominated for a scholarship. You're you're in the next phase, right? And so you got to go interview. You got to go interview with a professor of military science, James Drago, and a couple of his counterparts. Uh, uh, please be there, and, oh, and you have to take a physical fitness test while you're at it. So I got excused from the first morning of class. Went to uh, uh, went down there and interviewed, and and the world, of course, was much different then than it is today. And I was just talking to honorable court about this a short time ago of course it was different of course back then russia had invaded a neighboring country afghanistan uh we had a, a huge international hostage situation in iran uh we had a uh, very very heated election year incumbent incumbent democrat right uh we had the biggest economic issue was probably a lot of discussion about inflation and interest rates right it's a lot like this year, I guess. <laughs> uh, and uh, so I went through the interview. Uh, a gentleman, also a mil- career military guy named Tom Bonforti. It wasn't so much the interview I was impressed me. Tom Bonforti took me to Carmen's Deli on West Side Avenue and bought me lunch. Right? So the thing about West Side Avenue is very important. We lived on West Side Avenue. We, 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 we worked on West Side Avenue. Our, our rank and hall, our RTC, was on West Side Avenue. We went drinking on West Side Avenue, right? So. Many years later, I'm in a briefing in the Pentagon, and, and I got done. I was a colonel at the time. I, I think I was coming in TDY from UConn. I did my, peep, my uh, palm brief, and they said, hey, you did a great job. And, and somebody asked me, uh, did, you, did you go to West Point? Uh, and I said, well, close. I went to West Side. And, <laughs> and, and a guy was kind of shaking his head, you know, because not too many folks out of St. Pete's, you know, we just don't, you know, we don't wind up in the Pentagon, but we did, you know. So, so, I, I, but, so inflection point number one, uh, you know, they took a ch- Colonel Drago took a chance on me. I got my scholarship. The rest is history uh, at St. Pete's. Um, the other piece of it, though, was not only the military, but it was the accounting piece. So long before there was Tom from accounting, there was Jack from accounting, right? So my brother Jack was an accountant. He's six years older than me. Uh, we had the same accounting teacher, Ms. Wozniak. I think, uh, in fact, uh, if you, you guys remember Ed Daly from AMC here from a few years ago. Ed went, had the same accounting teacher as I did, too. So I know I had to watch my numbers, right? So, but, uh, and Mike, you probably had Wozniak, too, right? Man, piece of work, right? So anyway, but, uh, <laughs> I, I actually learned to like accounting. All right, because of Adrian Wozniak, right, back, back in the late 70s in the Hudson Catholic High School. So anyway, fast forward, and I'll have to move a little quicker here. Um, but uh, I'll just mention this briefly, and, and I know Mike, Mike Regan's online. Uh, I did, uh, was, I went to Fort Campbell, Kentucky, deployed to the Sinai, came back. They said, what do you want to do next? I go, hey, how about Europe? I said, sounds great, right? So after a couple of miscues, I wound up in Vicenza, Italy. Uh, showed up there. Italy was great. Once you got off outside the gate at night, it was great. You had a ball, all right? <laughs> Inside the gate, the military leadership and culture eh, was a little lacking there. I had I really struggled uh, for the first year or so there, 
And then uh, Mike showed up. And uh, I'll never forget, uh, he, he came in that day into Milan, and he showed up later in the afternoon. We had a softball game that night, and uh, <laughs> he sees his dispersing officer at the Oak Club with a beer in his hand and a dirty softball uniform on from the game before, and, and uh, that was his first impression of me. But uh, he had faith, and uh, Mike, thanks for being there. Um, made, made, uh, really made me make a decision to, uh, to stay and co convinced me that this, this program called uh, Army Comptroller Program at Syracuse is a great thing. you got to go do it. And so I said, all right, I'm in. So, all right, so I, I went to uh, Syracuse, went to advanced course Syracuse. So by the, along the way, of course, uh, a lot of great friends. Greg McMillan, my roommate from Campbell is online, very instrumental as an infantry uh, <clears throat> platoon leader, helped me probably kind of learn some of the things that I didn't know as being a finance guy. So Greg, really, I had a great talk the other night. Appreciate you being on. Uh, but I got to meet, again, great friends. The year group 85 that I was with, uh, guys like Lee Ransdell, Pat Riley, Doc Rossi, Chris Upson, uh, Kurt Rawhut, Brian Cummings. Uh, you know, you know all of those, many of you know all of those people who I had the opportunity to serve with, uh, all in the same year group as me. So thank you, and a lot of, I, know, I know Chris is here, Lee's here, Pat's here. Uh, thank you all so much uh, for being a part of that. And went to Syracuse, went to the Pentagon. So I got to quick Pentagon story. You've heard this before too. I gotta tell it because it's a lot of fun and it's in memory of my mom because, uh, you know, Mrs. Spear talked about my mom and I think you heard this story. I, I came to the Pentagon in 1993 uh, in the same, I think, two-week period. Uh, got married, right, Fran? We got married. We, uh, we moved to D.C., well, Vienna, Virginia. Uh, I changed jobs, bought a house. I think in like 10 days we did all that, right? It was, it's great. Just got it all done in one shot. Uh, <laughs> I, I had no stress at all. It was awesome, right? So, uh, But then I, I show up, and my supervisor, uh, when I show up at the Pentagon, is Miss Paul Rebar, right? So. Um, so uh, I'm working a few weeks, and I'm getting ready to get, get assigned long TDY for about two months to Leavenworth, Kansas. And so before, I told a friend, just stay up and stay up in Newark and, and keep working until I get back because there's no, you know, I'm going to be gone for, you know, it was like two and a half months. And so she came down one Friday, and with she brought my parents down to the Pentagon. In those days, it was really easy to get into the Pentagon, right? You just basically need to show a driver's license, and you were in. Um, so my folks, they're in tow, they come in my, I'm in, uh, up in 08-22 and, and uh, uh, walk in and uh, my mom walks down and I introduce to people and Paula standing there and, and my mom graciously walks up to Paula, grabs her hand and go, oh, you must be Tom's secretary. Yeah. <laughs> um, and how times have changed. Uh, my mom, uh, you know, she worked in the Chrysler building in the early 50s, right? And, you know, the roles were a little different back then, but Paula took it really, I, Corrected my mom, I said, Mom, Miss Rebar is my boss. And, <laughs> and uh, it was a great story. And uh, I think, tw uh, Paulo, 12 years ago, you came up to my mom, because, and God bless my parents, that was the last time they were ever in D.C. for was for my military time. Paul came up and said, you remember me? I'm Tom's secretary. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to get that story in again. Yeah, it, was, it, 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 it was really cool. So, uh, so I got through this, and uh, I, I had the fortune to really work with some of the, the greatest soldiers. I was down in 1st Special Forces Operations Attachment Delta, was their CFO for a couple of years. Um, boy, guys, you know, when you work with guys like Jimmy Stevens, who mentioned me on the financial side, but then you had guys like, no longer with us, I know Eldon Bargewell and Gary Harrell, who, who both uh, passed on way too young, and then Tony Thomas, who you remember, probably remember SOCOM, uh, was my, also my boss down there, and, and learning how to support those individuals. There's a lot of alums in the room I see uh, that were there as well uh, and supported that community, very, very special and a great opportunity. Um, in Germany, Lloyd Marshall's my battalion commander, phenomenal. Uh, leader and, and support that I had, and I was privileged. Lloyd and I, I think we arrived almost the same time, we, we left on the same day uh, uh, as with Commander Nick. So, um, you know, got to go back to the Pentagon, I joined staff, um, and a little moment here, uh, I was here, and this is why this, uh, this room and this building is so important to me. Um, you know, I was here on 9-11, um, and, uh, you know, I was on the joint staff, and I was fortunate that day, I was basically, if you remember the joint staff in those days, we were pretty much on the other side of the building. Um, but, uh, the people that I was with with Paula back in 93 who taught me budget, really, uh, many of them uh, were in that organization. Names like Karen Holman and Edna Stevens, Marjorie Salamone, Ed Ada Mason, Brenda Kegler, Janice Scott. I mean, there's many of them. And then, of course, colleagues of mine when I was at Delta, Kip Taylor, who was the aide to General Maud at the time, all very good, dear friends. Uh, so very tough time, but it was even, I think it strengthened my resolve that, you know, it was already a career for me at that point, but. Uh, 
I was going to serve a lot longer and uh, went to Fort Lewis, battalion command, went to Iraq, and I uh, was blessed. Uh, you know, the entire, I, the only thing I can describe, you know, people say luck. I, I think I was blessed. You know, I went over there with a, uh, basically, a, in a re very respectful terms, a pickup game of an active component, reserve component, gotten together, about 200 folks went over there and came back. And uh, other than some shrapnel, uh, Everybody came back in one piece, and uh, not a, never a leader can say that. And I was very blessed and very fortunate. Um, and then um, I, uh, I, you know, I came back here and worked on Army budget. Uh, you know, I, 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 I was at UCOM for a couple years after the War College, and then I got a phone call from Mark McAllister and said, uh, and "This is funny because General Stanton at the time, and I, and I'm, I know, sir, if, I don't know if you're on or not, but again, I appreciate your guidance too." Uh, I wrote to him one time at the War College and said, "Sir, I want to go to UCOM," and he said. Uh, uh, he goes, sure. I, I gave him this whole idea why it was important. He goes, and I, and I said at the end of my sentence, I said, sir, I'll go anywhere you want after this assignment. And so he said, he responded back an hour later and said, go, go to UConn. So great. So I went there. Typically a joint year, three year tour. Uh, so I figured we were there for three years. Fran, and this is the thing, the spouse thing that General Seminite and I mentioned. Uh, they they kind of get the short end of the stick sometimes. Hey, these are drying. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, um, uh, she, you know, she said, uh, he, Mark called me and said, Tom, I mean, if you know Mark, right? He goes, uh, hey, uh, your boss wants you back this summer, right? So cut my sh tour short from three to two. Friend the day before had just gotten a Dodds job, right? Just got the Dodds job, right? Teaching it. Uh, and so, uh, you know, she said, you've got to be kidding me. And then uh, she inserted another word in front of kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, 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 you know, she took it in stride, as, as spouses do. And uh, back we came here. <laughs> to DC um, <laughs> and uh, I got to work. I, I knew Kathy from Syracuse too. Uh, I, I won't tell the full story, but and Kathy rolled out on the, on the uh, tarmac one time when I was coming TDY to Syracuse, picked me up in a convertible. Couldn't do that anymore, but Coburn and I, and my bu good buddy Dave Coburn, of course, I think he may be on as well, so Dave. But uh, came back and, uh, and actually Dave was here to help mentor me a little bit more at that time. Kathy was my boss as the director of Army <coughs> Budget and I was what's called the wise guy back then. This is in 2009. Um, and, uh, you know, Kathy did that whole thing for a year without a deputy, and uh, we got through things, and I went down to be XO for a year, where I really got an opportunity uh, to, to work with Honorable Spear. Let me tell you a quick Honorable Spear story. The I distinctly remember the first time, sir, we had a long conversation. It was September either 5th or 6th of 2000, and I'm sorry, of 1995. And if you remember, it was a baseball fan out here, okay? All right, you remember what happened September 5th, 1995? Okay, Cal Ripken broke the uh, streak for consecutive games played, right? And uh, we, we were sitting in the, what was then called, of course, named after the old team, the Redskin Lounge on the, on the second floor. And we're talking about the importance of that. Scott, you probably remember this as an Orioles fan, but uh, uh, how, you know, just for the everyday person, just to, you know, to, to come to work every day and not miss a day and, and just be consistent about what you do, it's so important, you know. Uh, um, Honorable Loman, they talked about being persistent, present, persistent, and consistent, right? So I remember the consistent part. So I remember that. Um, and I got to tell you here today, I'm, you know, what are you most proud of? 39 years, <laughs> and I'm blessed. Uh, <laughs> I never missed a day of work. I never called in sick uh, in, two th in, in 39 years. And, you know, not everybody can, it's some, t some of it's luck. I mean, people get sick. It happens, right? I just been very blessed in that respect, so I've been able to be consistent. But I remember that conversation, sir, about consistency, and I developed a lifelong friendship with uh, with Honorable Spear. Um, so I, uh, you know, I got an opportunity to go teach. I was teaching out at NDU, and I figured this was a great way to, to 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 sunset my career. I could go out there for three years, maybe longer, get to thirty. Life was good. Anybody here teach? It's awesome. You're on the platform, right? For and I was on a platform probably about eight nine. Steve, I uh, had this same similar job to what Steve Hansen out there has now. Uh, you're teaching for about you got about nine hours of instruction time a week, maybe ten. You're doing lesson plans or whatever, and then you're doing research, right? And and, you, and you're doing a lot of PT, right? You're working out, going running. It's good. Um, was there another so another inflection point get a phone call as mr spear mentioned it was jim watkins he goes tom and jim you know jim god love him jim if you're on he, he one of the greatest bosses but he's very impulsive is probably the, a word that comes to your mind he goes hey i got this i got an opportunity plan for you here i want you to retire i want you to start your civilian career and this is a friday afternoon i go well jim I, this is a great day how much time do i have to think about this he goes you got to call me back monday all right uh, <laughs> And it, true, uh, Jim, you know, and so I, I'm, I'm fleeting up to replace you. I remember John Argadale, John retired, and you know, Jim moved up, and uh, and I did. I said, I don't know anything about audit. You know, I'm not a CPA, and uh, he goes, ah, I need a leader. And so um, I 
went back to my commandant th that Monday and said, sir, I got a plan here. I'm, I'm going to go with this. I checked with my career manager, Fran, and she said, well, you know, I was going to kick out in three years anyway. Uh, and so I, I did. I, I, I went with it. So there we go. Now, now my civilian career starts. And it was actually exactly 12 years ago today, I showed up at the Polk building and I meet Mr. William Roberts, uh, Doc Rossi, Chris Upson, and man, we, we, the gang, and Mr. Sean Lennon. I think Sean's here. Uh, and we were off to work. We went uh, in a Star Wars career. And it was an adjustment. It was an adjustment. But, but William kept me, uh, kept me on a straight and narrow, right? He, 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 I think Jim must have told you to keep policing me up here and there. And, uh, and William did. So I pre appreciate the partnership, buddy. Uh, you know, I'm sorry for the uh, Yanks putting a little bit of the heat on the Orioles right now, too. So. <laughs> uh, but... Uh, um, and what a, what a great experience working with that team and, 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 and under the leadership of Donald Spear, Mr. Watkins had a great time. Um, got an opportunity uh, and, you know, with, with Mr. Miller, Mr. Wes Miller uh, was at the court at the time. Wes came over to, uh, to be the, the DASA FO and then I had subsequently had an opportunity to go to replace Wes. Uh, I really appreciate and respect Wes because initially at first, Wes thought maybe that might not be a great idea, but uh, Wes fully supported me, as did Honorable Spear, to go over there and spend six years. Uh, and many of you from the Corps are here, and I appreciate that. Sir, thank you for the kind words. Scott, uh, I, I, it was a pleasure to finish out with you, too, uh, another fellow uh, resident of the Garden State uh, to, 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 to be with. And it was just a, an absolute pleasure every day to be at the Corps. You guys all know how much I loved it there, okay? Uh, it was no, I did not hide my, my, my joy, and Kathy knows this too. She's, every time I, she mentioned CORE, I would, I would, I would perk up. Uh, but, uh, and, uh, and so, um, uh, six great years, it went, went very fast, but then, um, you know, I had an opportunity, and you know, uh, th things that we did, uh, it's just amazing. I know I got Scott Fabian out there, Mike Walsh and Bill Holtzman, I know, Mike and Bill, I don't know if you're here, I know you were going to try to make it. Mr. Cooper, David, thank you so much for being. I had uh, the only reason I survived the six years at the Army Corps of Engineers is I had the best counsel in the Department of Defense keeping out eye for me. David, thank you. Really appreciate you being here. Uh, Mark Easton, uh, who, who uh, you know, when I was at the Corps uh, and, and Mark had departed, uh, his replacement uh, wasn't here very long. Mark was still very much engaged, is still engaged today in supporting us at, o at uh, DCFO. Uh, mentioned to me that, hey, you need to apply to be the DCFO position. I said, okay, I'll give it some thought. Um, uh, and uh, I, um, I, I did. Uh, I did. I applied and, and came over. And uh, usually um, I had the interview process. Miss Davis was on the initial panel. It went pretty well. I, I do, uh, you know, the Irish me comes out a little bit. And I, I think I told Miss Randa this the other day, I tell too many stories, uh, including on interviews. So I said, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't know how well I did, uh, but all of a sudden I got a call, I guess a few days later and they miss Otto Miller and Otto McCord want to interview you. And okay, this is all, you know, kind of still in COVID era, I was on teams, you know, so I, uh, I ended up getting the interview and I guess it went pretty good, but then they asked that question at the end is this, if, if um, selected, would you accept? And anything other than a resounding absolutely gets you in trouble. Uh, and I said, I'm not quite sure. Uh, <laughs> Uh, big shoes to fill, number one, uh, and uh, I loved the Army, too, uh, but, um, I, and I thought that, you know, this probably is the right thing to do, and if I can help, if I need, if they need my help, then if you're being, and it's just an honor to be asked, right, and uh, I, it's hard to say no, and, and sir, thank you, Kathy, thank you, absolutely uh, the best decision I made to come, come over here and do this. Um, now, I will tell you, though, people tell you, oh, you know, especially with the audit, oh, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Uh, I say bullshit. It's, <laughs> it's a sprint, okay? Uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, it's, it's a 26.2 mile sprint. Uh, and we get tired. And the hardest thing to do sometimes is to not do something, right? You all have jobs like that, and it's like that with right now what we're doing here, and to pick that and find. You know, you guys mentioned partnerships. Partnerships are so, so important. And uh, I think uh, I think we had good partnerships there. And, and Steve, guys like Steve Marani, uh, DFAS with Audrey, and Jonathan, and Aaron, and, uh, you know, CIO, and uh, the folks that really, I need their help, the services. I want to thank particularly my battle buddies now. Um, uh, so from Navy, of course, Ms. Kadiri was my typical day-to-day counterpart -day, uh, 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 with Navy. I have Greg Colval from Marine Corps. Congratulations again for the Marine Corps. Greg. Kind of led that effort here this past year to get a Marine Corps clean audit opinion. Uh, Wes Robinson now from Army. Before that, Mike Ramsey, and before that, Wes Miller. But uh, Wes uh, couldn't be more happier to see such a leader like you there. And uh, um, 
and uh, and of course, um, you know, uh, you know, all the other organizations, Odos and everything that made this um, GAO and IG. All right. So I want to thank Asif and 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 Lauren for being here. You know, I've been since I've been in SES, I've had <laughs> Asif and Lauren follow me around. <laughs> Uh, I think the entire 12 years checking on what I'm doing, right? So uh, I don't know. It might be get, it might get a little tougher now, guys. Right? Uh, uh, but uh, but no, without that. So I had the uh, and then all of the folks in the army. I, I see Todd and Lisa there. Todd, thanks for coming. And you know another, another year group 85 guy, right? Started out in the infantry, but you know my Syracuse classmate as well. I, I stack up my Syracuse class with anybody anybody's class that we had with Todd, Brian, Kurt. Uh, Shelby Bell, um, you know, uh, John Argadale, I mean, we, had, we had late Dave Coburn, we had, what a loaded class with Les Bram, I mean, it was just an awesome class, right? So uh, it was really, really good and made, made friends for life. And so thanks, Todd, for being here. Um, so, uh, so I talked about the, the, the PSAs, but let me talk about my team, all right? So uh, the ODCFO, uh, Kim, my assistant deputy, did a phenomenal job. Let, let me start before I do, within Comptroller. Um, Great partners, uh, Ann McAndrew. Ann, you're here. Ann, thank you for so much for supporting me. And you know, when I had to make a decision to, to maybe do something different, you did. You were very supportive. Your support and General Summit was spot on. And you know, through a number of things that we did at the Corps, uh, you had our back. So, so from a previous job, I want to thank you, and I want to thank you for being such a great partner here. Christy Colazar, Mike, Mike. First of all, thank you for the prayer from one former altar boy to another. Uh, as, as he said to, to me, he goes, what do you think of this prayer? I go, that's a great prayer, Mike. I said, for, for one, for one. So I appreciate it. Alali from uh, and Robert, thank you so much. Ma'am, Honorable Spangle, thank you for being here as well. Um, about partners, too. So I want to talk also about So I mentioned Army. I mentioned Navy. I mentioned Marine Corps. Air Force. Uh, you know, Tina. Tina. Uh, Tina was Tina Pierce was selected uh, to be my replacement, and I got a chance to work with Tina. Tina actually worked as a contractor for me like 11 years ago, and she's she went to quite a journey. Went, spent some time uh, in, in in the private sector, came here to public sector, worked at DHA, worked at Air Force, uh, Marine Corps veteran, uh, great leader. She will her and Kim together will carry this forward. Um, I want to again thank Calandra. Not only is she a great orator. She's a darn good executive too, all right? So, Kalarna, thank you so much for leading the fire team. Mr. Rabosa, I had the, the distinct privilege of, of inducting Edson earlier this year. Uh, oh, it's over a year ago now, man, time flies. It's March of 23. Uh, having his family here, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, as, as uh, and, and I, I, you know how much I feel about the journey people took and the diversity of our organization, right? Um, uh, Edson's a native of, uh, immigrated here from Cabo Verde as a young, young boy, uh, and his family, and it's indicative of, of the 41 or 42 people we have in ODCFO came from 14 different countries of origin. Pretty amazing stuff, right? It tells about the diversity of our organization. It's not only where you came from, it's how you got there, the journey you took, whether you're a crusty old colonel like me or an MBA student or a career civilian, right, a military spouse, right? All it leads to the, the richness and the texture of our organization. So uh, that I take great pride in. So going back to St. Mother Teresa, those, these experiences and those adventures you had, and those are the things that I have to share. So, um, so now we'll get to the, so we got, I got DCFO and, and the whole team here. You guys did a phenomenal job supporting me, and I, I'm great, grateful. Um, my other team, okay, and this is the team, uh, so, you know, uh, my immediate family. So, uh, you know, General Summit, I said it best. When you're a spouse, it's, it's tough. It's tough. And, you know, I think, Fran, um, when I retired 12 years ago, probably thought it was going to get easier, right? <laughs> Didn't get a whole lot easier. And, and, and as the kids got older, the demands got greater, too, right? It, it was tougher. But... Uh, I'm so proud of my family. Uh, so first off, uh, you know, so real quick before we do the presentation of Fran, uh, so we've known each other 40 years, right? So uh, we were actually in college, and Mike and Tom, we're going to notice probably, we, we didn't date in college, really. We, we, uh, we knew each other. We went on like one date, maybe two, right? Oh, three? All right. <laughs> But it was kind of friendly. It wasn't like we knew she had no way. She said, no way is she going to marry a guy from the military. And, uh, and I was kind of like, yeah, that's probably a good idea. Uh, <laughs> and we stayed good friends. And then I went off, and off I went. And I was gone for like five years. So, so I, should I tell the story about the school? <laughs> so I, I, I show up after, well, this is, just a, this is kind of funny, because I show up at uh, the elementary school that she's teaching. And I knew she was teaching there. I kind of lost track of her. So let me go. I got back from the Sinai, and I, I was gone six months. And uh, 
Let me go check on, you know, see what she's doing. Maybe she wants to go out and get a beverage or get lunch. And so I go to the principal's office and I say, is this Miss, her name is Lopes. Is Miss Lopes there? I go, he goes, uh, oh, Miss Lopes, no, she got married and moved to South Jersey. I go, oh. <laughs> so you think you got to remember Lopes in Portuguese is like Smith, okay? <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so uh, I turned around. It's a true story. I'm a little, little embellished, but, but truly. I started walking out the door. That just didn't sound right. And I go, Francine Lopes? And he goes, he goes, oh, that Lopes. Nah, she's still here. She's down in the basement teaching first grade. So I went down, uh, but I hadn't turned around and asked. Uh, who knows? Who knows what would happen, right? So anyway, I, I get back, and we went and got some lunch. And then, like, two more years go by, and I don't see her again. So, uh, But she came to visit me in Italy, and it's a long story. But uh, we did get, the last time I had a three-week vacation in Portugal was, was it's actually, it was 33 years, but that's okay. But uh, Mike Regan generously signed off on my leave form as a captain. Uh, and we, we drove from Vicenza via Heidelberg for a softball tournament, a bomb holder, through Spain, France, Lisbon, back. Uh, if you could spend three weeks in a car cooped up and not kill each other, you got some compatibility there, right? So, so and, and the rest is history. So, so anyway, um, she is absolute greatest sport, greatest friend, and absolutely the greatest mom. So. So I do have a lieutenant in the family. So, uh, so um, my daughter um, came to me, um, I guess, at the beginning of her senior year and said, uh, she said, Dad, I want, to, uh, I want to apply for an ROTC scholarship. Right? And I said, wow. You knew my daughter in high school. The last person in the world. <laughs> <laughs> she wanted to go to NYU, to film school. Right? It's <clears throat> exorbitant, OK? And I, I think she had a <laughs> You know, she's pretty savvy and said, there's no way I can ask Dad to pay for this, and I can't pay for it. I don't want one. And so she said, hey, let me try this. This sounds, this is, you know, she grew up in a military family, and so she took a shot at it. She got it, right? She's got a three-year scholarship. We, we helped her out the first year, obviously, the GI Bill came in. But, but, you know, she made that commitment and is still making that commitment today. She's out three years. She did go through the Fordham program. She's done a fantastic job. And, oh, by the way, she's working for the Corps. Army Corps of Engineers. <laughs> As a videographer and a visual information specialist right now, helping out the team, and uh, and I couldn't be prouder. <laughs> All right. So for the men, uh, women is flowers, and men it's a little, you know. So just for the men, that I'll tell you ahead of time, I thought about what to get them, and. Um, and I thought about the golf balls, you know. <laughs> you know, you know. I don't experience that they're better than me in golf. They ain't that much better. <laughs> <laughs> Those things are gonna wind up in a water, all right? So we're gonna hold on. unless a strong wind comes, it's not gonna blow this thing off. So I got a series, and you guys can mix and match, mix and match and trade. But uh, you know, good old United States Army. Uh, great out of the course. Keep the sun off your head, all right, buddy. And this is for Dave. So Dave. Um, just graduated JMU. He's, he's doing great. Uh, he's going to be passing his resume around here after. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're working at it. Uh, but uh, no, nah, he's, he's going to be fine. Just finished an internship down at Boca, Boca Raton. Real tough job all summer. He was down there. And we checked on him a few weeks ago. He's, he was doing fine. But he's back in town. And I, I know uh, he's not an accountant, but his girlfriend is. Right? So there, 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 there's hope, right? So Dave, thanks, buddy. You're doing great. I'm so darn proud of you. So, uh, my brother and sister, right? So, first of all, my sister, uh, you're younger, biggest fan, right? She is so, um, so if those of you who, who, who have met my mom, had the privilege of meeting my mom, and if you haven't, it's okay, because she's living in my sister, right? We all talk about that. Same, right, right, Bob? Same, coffee, coffee, right? So, uh, so I, uh, I could have had a, uh, the best sister I could ever hope for, so I got one of each, so I can see she's my favorite sister. Uh, but she is, and she's been a biggest fan and uh, a great, fantastic mom, too. So thank you for being here today. So Jackson County, right? So uh, uh, no, really, I, I'm unfortunate, too. You talk about my brother would follow me everywhere. Uh, he, couldn't meet, he couldn't visit me in the Sinai, and he couldn't visit me in Iraq. But I think you've been just about everywhere else I've been. And, uh, 
and Jack. So yeah, pretty much. Pretty much so. Uh, career accountant too. Uh, last job was with the West New York School System uh, in New Jersey. Uh, did did phenomenal work, but uh, spent a lot of time in, in support of me. Uh, and uh, you know, he he uh, always being indebted for the care he gave of my folks too, because he stayed in New Jersey, and while well, I was gone for many many years, and. Um, couldn't ask for a better brother, and he's been a role model for me. I don't think I would have been an accountant if it wasn't for him. Uh, don't and blame me. <laughs> I just like to run around and do fun things. Uh, but, uh, but no, Jack, thanks so much. You mean so much. Appreciate it. All right. You're in some court. All right. So, Robbie. All right. Let me tell you something about my nephew. All right. Robbie is a center, he is a, we call in the military term, a center of gravity, right? He is it, right? Um, I've learned more from Robbie probably than anybody in my family. And if what he can contribute and what he does, living in a world of autism, um, he has done so much for us. He just got done, got back late last night. He got in midnight because he had to give a speech to a fundraiser sponsored by the New Jersey Golf Association to, to sponsor autism awareness. And uh, Robbie did that on his own. He's phenomenal. He works three jobs. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, two jobs. Two jobs now, right? <laughs> okay. Disney yeah. store clothes. That's right, the Disney store clothes. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, works at Old Navy, works at the Metuchen Country Club. They, I'll tell you one thing, everybody knows Robbie because they absolutely love him. And I love him. So uh, actually, uh, so quick story, him and uh, Mike Chappell uh, sat in business law class together 40 years ago, right? And <laughs> Rob, so Bob has direct uh, role in, in supporting the advancement of Mike Chappell's career because he kept him awake in business law. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Bob, I want to thank you for coming down. Uh, we're both avid Yankee fans. Uh, we got a lot in common. I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed, uh, you know, not only you, you're not really a brother in law, you're a brother. Right? And please, uh, I hope now retirement gets more time to do some stuff. And, uh, I'm the last of the Mohicans here, and the last guy to. Uh, to we'll, hang we'll work on that golf game. Yeah. <laughs> he is a lot better golfer than me, I'll tell you. But you're still only getting a hat, right? <laughs> you got it, right? All right. So, um, and they are dry. Man, that worked out. All right, yeah. <laughs> um, thanks all for being here. Uh, you know, and everybody else. I, I, you know, again, I'll I'll say two things. Uh, thank you for giving me a chance and make me a part of your life, pers pro both personally and professionally. God bless you all. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please stay rising and join Mr. Steffens as he leads us in the singing of the Army song. And before we start, just a couple things. If you remember the song, uh, years ago they, it was truncated and they extended it with the intro part, right? So I'll sing the intro part, a cappella. But then I, you better join in. <laughs> <laughs> Payback's a medevac, right? So, uh, and please, refreshments afterwards. Uh, you know, you guys know lots of goodies here. All right, so tip your bartenders, okay? Uh, <laughs> but, uh, uh, no, here, uh, so I'm going to try this. Uh, you know, I did this at the core. People liked it, so I said, hey, what the heck? You get a little, they get a little bonus here, right? <laughs> Are we ready? Yeah. <clears throat> March along, sing a song, we're the army of the free. Count, count the brave, the count the true, who have fought to victory. We're the army and proud of our name. We're the army and proudly proclaim. First to fight for the right and to build the nation's might And the army goes rolling along Proud of all we have done fighting till the battle's won And the army goes rolling along And it's high, high, hey, the army's on its way Sound off your cadence loud and strong Where'er we go, you will always know that 
the army goes rolling along. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the ceremony. Please allow the Steffens family to take some quick family photos on the stage immediately following the ceremony. Meanwhile, you're invited to form a line to my right and to your left to congratulate the Steffens family in a receiving line. And afterwards, as Mr. Steffens has mentioned, please stay to enjoy refreshments in the food hall at the back of the room. Thank you for attending. May your journey home be safe. Please stay standing for the departure of the official party. <laughs> All right. Official party the party. Okay. And now photos. 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 Okay, um, sir. Hey, Pat. Jeremy. Friend. Oh. You too, too.